Mm. Welcome to Boxing Profiles. I'm your host, Tony Prince. How's it going? Hey, guys, last night, Top Rank had a great card of boxing on there. I really, really enjoyed it. <clears throat> Let's talk a little bit about Navarrete and Oscar Valdez. Man, what a great fight. You know, to be able to see these type of fights now is a great, great thing. It kind of feels like the golden era once again, because in the golden era, I was able to see all the greats fight. Now I'm starting to see all these young boxers starting to step up and putting it on the line. Yes, somebody's O had to go, okay? But guess what? I mean, both of these fighters have lost before, but these fighters are now starting to step up and someone's O has to go. But sometimes, when your O goes, it makes you that much greater, okay? But let's get back to Navarrete and Oscar Valdez. <clears throat> Why did Navarrete win that particular fight? Um, some people just say his style is just straight ugly. Some people will say that he's not very athletic. Uh, I heard Timothy Bradley say last night, Navarrete's footwork is horrible. But yet and still, Navarrete is the champion in the division. So when I stop and think and I hear something like Timothy Bradley say, something like Navarrete's footwork is horrible, it may be horrible, but he is the champ. The question of it is, is why are all these technical fighters losing to Navarrete? Okay, that is the question. Okay, the two most important things in boxing is positioning and timing. Okay, so let me break this down to you. What exactly is timing? Timing is for you to create the opportunity when you see something, okay? And what I mean by that is, I'll just use this sort of analogy. Have you ever seen the basketball player, Magic Johnson plays, okay? Why was he able to <clears throat> all of a sudden intercept the ball and take it down and just dunk it or whatever it is that he did with the ball, okay? Why was it? Because he was in position to do so. Now, how do you put yourself in position to do something like that? Well, number one is something that you have to train for. That's number one. Number two, you must know your opponent. If you are studying your opponent and you're watching the things that he's doing and you're paying attention to what he's doing, now you could make those adjustments and get your timing right. Last night, when Oscar Valdez was, was, um, was, was, was um, when he was trying to block punches, okay, from Navarrete, Navarrete would, would throw the punch and Oscar Valdez was thinking that he would block. He was going to be blocking the punch. But he was in position. Then he gets out of position with that broken timing that he has, which will make it very, very hard for any other fighter, even if for technical fighters, to pick up on. Number one, he was long, rangy, okay? Very, very good head movement, in and out movement. He pivot very, very well. Again, some people say, Timothy Bradley said, Navarrete's footwork is horrible. But look what Navarrete did with it, what he did with his jab. That jab he had was amazing, okay? And it was completely awkward. Something that I've never basically seen uh, before where he throws a jab and leaves it out there and then he pulls it back. Okay, now I've seen fighters just just take their take their jab and they just stick it out just like this, and you know, and, and they they're moving around, they're trying to you know get the uh, get the advantage like that. But the way Navarrete used his jab last night, he threw the jab, bam, hit you and left it out there, and then he got out of range. This this is something that was amazing, a technique that hasn't been done, or I haven't really seen it, and I've been around boxing most of my life. Okay. In fact, I'm a coach at the Lions Den in Pittsburgh, California, which was a great, great tactic. He was in, he was out, he was pivoting right, he was pivoting left, okay? He was creating different positions to hit Oscar Valdez, and you guys saw the results of Oscar Valdez in his face, okay? So, you know, for people to say Navarrete is not that great of an athlete, you could say that. 
but he's on the top of the food chain right now. He's just he's just there. And there's nothing that we could do about that, okay, until somebody comes along and beat them. Um, you know, I saw something today that they were saying Navarrete and Shakur Stevenson, hey, that would be a great fight. That's another great fight that I think can happen. But, okay, I'm going to try to get back to timing. Timing is creating the opportunity to be there when your opponent thinks you're not going to be there, okay? Timing is blocking the punches when your opponent <laughs> is thinking that you're not going to block the punches. You're doing total opposite of what your opponent is even thinking. This is a way to beat your technical fighters as well as using your punches going to the body and back upstairs to the head, which is something that we saw the great Julio Cesar Chavez do all the time and it worked consistently. So, you know, all you young fighters that are out there, we have all kinds of tapes from the old school black and white. You, we talking going back to Sugar Ray Robinson, Jersey Joe Walcox, okay, Joe Lewis. We, got, we, got, we have Hector Macho Camacho Sr., Hector Macho Camacho Jr. We also have Julio Cesar Chavez. We got the Barreras, okay. We, we got all types of fighters that are out there that has given us all types of knowledge. Now the question is, what I'm gonna to say to you guys is, why aren't you guys looking at these old films of these fighters and putting all those tools inside your arsenal, okay? Now I have never heard any of the podcaster even, even mention something like that before, and I believe me, I watch all the podcasts that are out there, okay? When you have a wealth of resources, you need to use your resources. It's gonna make you that much great of a fighter, okay? All right, so timing. When I tell my guys in the gym all the time, timing is creating that opportunity when your opponent is thinking you're gonna do something else, okay? You make him think you're going to punch, but you're blocking, okay? Or you're, you make him think you're blocking and you're punching. Okay, that completely throws them off. You break the rhythm. You never, never, ever, ever stand in front of them. Okay, you always move side to side. All right, you keep your head moving. Never keep your head on the line. Last night, Oscar Valdez was keeping his head on the line. Last night, Oscar Valdez, he minimally used his jab last night. Okay, yes, he threw a lot of great shots. Okay, and he hit Navarrete, but as you can see at the end of the fight, Oscar Valdez was beat up pretty bad and Navarrete it didn't look like he had a scratch on him okay why is why does this happen why does it happen everybody is sit back and they'll say man that wasn't supposed to happen uh valdez is the more technical fighter valdez is this valdez is that okay guys well reality just set in navarrete is a fighter that everybody continues to underestimate when you step in that square circle, you cannot underestimate anyone, okay? All right? You can't underestimate anyone. With his broken timing and his ability to step in, step out, okay? Block, move his head, okay? And that nasty uppercut that he was throwing last night was a big surprise to Oscar Valdez. It was an amazing fight. I really, really enjoyed it. And I tell you what, I'm looking for more great fights because there's nothing like a great boxing match. Like I said before, boxing is back. This is the only sport where you can watch something in real time. The emotions that we saw last night from Oscar Valdez after he lost that fight. Man, let me tell you guys something. If you guys never, ever, ever been inside a fight, or you've never been inside the ring, you won't understand. I understand completely what it's like to be in a fight. You put your blood, sweat, and tears into the fight, and you're supposed to do, you're supposed to win the fight, and you lose the fight. Regardless of how you lost, it hurts. It hurts. 
Okay? I mean, it hurts. For whatever reason it is, whether they cheated you, whether, whether, whether you just lost a fight, whatever it is, it deeply, deeply hurts. And it's something that stays with you for the rest of your life until you are able to make the adjustments and get back to where you once was and then go further. Okay? So, man, what a great fight last night. Again, like I said about timing. Timing is creating the opportunity where there is no opportunity. So as you are fighting your opponent, you're looking right at him. You're paying attention to everything that he's doing it. You notice that your opponent, he throws that jab, but he doesn't pull that jab straight back. He drops his hand. That, there's your timing. That's your window of opportunity for you to strike. But more importantly, the fighter that sees it is the fighter that can capitalize on it. A lot of you young fighters are not seeing it. Okay? This is why we always say, go back to the old black and white. Because the fighters then were doing things that some of the fighters today are not doing. Get back to doing the movement. Get back to doing the proper footwork. Okay? Get back to mastering your craft. Okay? And you'll discover timing, creating those opportunities where no one else can see them. That's the difference between a great fighter and an elite fighter. Okay? This is, this is what they need to do like i said before you know hey i'm gonna come to you and i'm gonna tell you guys the truth okay and one of the truths is timing and positioning is the key to boxing and your jab the jab sets up every single punch that you make every single combination and spack in fact let's 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 talk about navarrete's combination punches did you see the combinations he would throw four five six seven punch combinations right and what would he do he would move and then he would he'll go right back to his jab again okay timing timing when oscar valdez would come in what would he do he'll take a slight step back and move over and he'll shoot his uppercut timing to change the angles okay i don't know if you guys see that go back and watch the fight over and over and over again again i'm gonna say it look back at the old black and white that means all the old school fighters that paved the way look back at those fighters look at their styles then look at the modern day styles from Sugar Ray Leonard, Tommy Hearns, and all those other guys. You okay, Iran Barkley, all right? Look back at all those guys and see what they did to become great and take from each and every one of them and put it in your arsenal. Look at the fighters today. In fact, we just had a great fight with Terrence Crawford and Earl Spence. Look what Terrence Crawford did. Look at how he created those opportunities when Earl Spence would come in. This is timing, okay? And then I haven't heard anyone talk about this, so I'm gonna talk about things that other people are not talking about. That's what makes boxing profiles so different from everybody else. All right, guys, I got my neighbor over here cutting the lawn, so hopefully this video comes out great, and I'll be back at you guys real soon. Remember something, keep punching, don't get punched from Peace. Pop that jab, block it, punch it, block it, that's it, that's it, that's get him, where you go?